Hey Canucks fans, it is a Canucks game day and it's also time for another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Canuck Clay. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, November the 28th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. And as always, this vlog is brought to you by Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all your real estate needs and for perform and transform personal training and weight loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial using the link in my video description down below. Let's talk about tonight's game. Today's game, well, tonight's game. It's a night in Boston. It'll be this afternoon in Vancouver. And then we'll get into your questions. So Yaroslav Halak, he is starting tonight. So um, no surprise there, given that there's a back-to-back. It's Boston today. It's Montreal tomorrow. Halak playing against his former team. So I expect Halak to do well, and I hope that the Canucks score for him. Every time Halak plays, the Canucks only score one or two goals at most. So hopefully the Canucks do indeed score for Halak and score for themselves, for each other, and for a chance to uh, you know for uh, to pick up a win, their first win of this of this road trip. Now the. I think they're going to go with the same lineup, except for Halak, the same lineup that played well in Columbus, although they lost 4-2, but they controlled a lot of the plays I talked about yesterday. So up front, you'll likely have Miller playing with Besser and Hoglander. You have Horvat playing with Pearson and Garland. Then Petey, Podkols, and Dowling. And then a the fourth line of Dickinson with Mott and Chason. That means Lamico is your extra forward. And on D, you got OEL with Myers, you got Hughes with Shen, and then you have Burles with Pullman, and that means Hunt is your extra defenseman. So Lamico and Hunt likely be the healthy scratches today. And then, like I said, Halak and Nett playing ahead of Demko. Likely Demko gets a start in Montreal tomorrow. Canucks 0 for 2 on this road trip. A chance to get in the win column on this road trip by winning today in Boston. And just one other thing about Boston. Of course, we think of Boston. We think of 2011. Just a, I'm just curious. Uh, put this your answer in the comments below. Do you still have any ill will, resentment towards Boston? Or 10 years later, have you moved on? Just kind of curious. Maybe put that in the comments as well. I'll give you a score prediction. Yes, uh, I, know, I know a couple of you have been playfully teasing me about the 4-2 prediction. So tonight, I think the Canucks are going to score three, and I think Halak's going to have a great game and only out let him one. So let's go 3-1 Canucks, and let's go Connor Garland scoring the first goal for the team. would love to know your score prediction and your first Canucks goal scorer. Leave that in the comments below as well. Okay, uh, tonight, 10 p.m. live stream. Hope you'll join me. Um, going to have a bit of a new look tonight, and you'll see what I mean if you join me tonight at 10 p.m. It's an improvement, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Let's get to your question. Thanks for submitting them on my community page. Hero member Justin Credible says, if Bull leaves the team through a trade or UFA, who do you see as the next possible captain of this team, assuming they're here for an extended period of time? To me, uh, it, I think it's going to be Oliver ekman Larson. We have him for another seven years after this. Hefty contract, yes, but seven years after this, he was already a captain in Arizona and he's already wearing an A. So um, given that Miller's only got a year uh, left on his contract, don't know, he might have the same fate as Bo. To me, Oliver ekman Larson is the natural selection. Crispy Assassin, do you think PD will bounce back soon? I sure hope so. You know, he, he's making small improvements in his game, his compete level, but then you see his horrible effort on the Max Domi anti net goal on Friday night, which I talked about in my vlog. So I, do I think he will? I don't know. Do I hope he will? Of course, but I, I like to think so. Yeah. From what we've seen from him over the first two years or three years, he's too good not to bounce back. So the Canucks need him, obviously. I lie. If you were to do a teardown of the Canucks roster this season, who would you want to move and who would you keep to build around? Well, there, there's a few untouchables to me. It's PD, Hughes, Demko, Hoglander, and Podkolzin. Those are the five untouchables to me, given their age, contract status, all those things. Then I'd say Besser, Horvat, Miller are in the, kind of the next kind of the next tier. But if you need to make big big moves, maybe you look at moving Besser because he's going to be owed a big contract at the end of the season. Maybe you look at moving Horvat or Miller because they're going to be owed big contracts and then the next season. So yeah, those guys are all going to be in the in line for seven, seven and a half million dollars. So that's a pretty big move. You can't, you're not going to be able to move Ekman Larson. You're not going to be able to move Myers. So I think um, it's one of those three, Besser, Horvat, or Miller. Gmod, the season being lost, do you feel we should ride it out with trades and firings? Oh, sorry. Do you think we should ride it out without 
trades and firings. I suggest this to avoid any further long-term um, mistakes. If there was a time for firing, it was two weeks ago, a trade could be a quick decision with a lot of blowback. Gmod, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's almost like we missed our window right when we still had a chance to contend, even though it was already slipping away. But you're right, two weeks later, we've completely slipped away to the bottom of the Pacific Division. So um, I think as hard as it is, we may have to look at rebuilding again. I know we, it feels like we just got out of a rebuild, but I also said that Pet Pedersen and Hughes likely slept, sped up that rebuild a little bit. I think you may have to do that. You don't want to do a desperation trade and further hamper our chances. So I think you do have to ride it out. You, you can fire the coach. You can fire the GM. you got to ride it out with these players. A couple more contracts come off the books at the end of the season. Make a decision on best, sir, and then go from there. I think that's very wise. You Nick Morgan says this, uh, and Maddie Hickman, very similar question. So Nick says this, what do you think it will take for the Canucks to turn it around and get back to where we expected them to be at? And Maddie says, how would you fix the Canucks? So uh, those two questions are very similar. As I said in my response to Gmod's question, I don't think you blow it up. I don't think you can. You, you, you don't want to give away any more prospects and definitely more picks. You don't want to give away those. So I think you fix the Canucks by, um, you know, very small fixes. You bring up some guys from Abbotsford, Di Giuseppe, the Patans, the Rathbones. I know they're not going to be massive needle movers, but at least get get a different look in the team try and find some chemistry maybe you play halak a little more get him going as demko's game has faltered a little bit but really you hope guys like pd and besser turn around their game so i know it's not the best answer a, a gm and especially a coach can have a short-term fix but ultimately it's up a short-term boost but ultimately it's up to the players on the ice carol carol bovenlander hi clay who's your favorite player of this year's team bo horvat bo horvat is my current favorite Canucks player and in um, who's your favorite player in past years? And what's your favorite year as a Canucks fan? So Horvat is my current favorite player. Luongo is my favorite all-time favorite Canucks player. And my favorite year as a Canucks fan, um, you got to go 2011 because we were one game away from winning the Stanley Cup. And it's appropriate that I, uh, and so many memories, right? Because of the, the Alex Burrows, Dragon Slayer and go, Kevin Bieksa off the stanchion or stanch, off the stanchion to him. And then, of course, Vancouver, Boston. And it's fitting that you ask that question on you know on a day where we are playing the Boston Bruins. Sion, possible good replacement candidates for GM and coach. For coach, I like Boudreau. I like Dan Bilesma. For GM, um, there's a guy out of Carolina, Tulski, who's good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I like Gilman as well, but I don't know if he would come back to Vancouver. Brian Gogolin says, so we got two more statements. Uh, Brian says, who's going to, oh no, this is a question. Who are you going to replace Travis Green? Oh, I, I, like I said, I, I like Boudreaux and I like Bosma. And who do you think the candidates for the new Canucks are? Frustrated fan, go Canucks, go. God bless you, Canuck Clay and family. God bless you too, Brian. Yeah, I like Boudreaux and Bosma, the two Bs. Christian says, which coach is responsible for our special teams? I see a bunch of assistant coaches, but no one with the actual title special teams coach. How accountable should this coach be and how come more fingers aren't pointing at him? Uh, traditionally, the the coach, assistant coach in charge of the forwards does the power play. Traditionally, the assistant coach in charge of the defense does the penalty kill. So that means Jason King is mostly power play. Nolan Baumgartner, Nolan Baumgartner, excuse me, is mostly penalty kill, and Travis Green speaks in to both of them. Christopher Chen says, "Why is Jack Rathbone not on the roster? Now we have two right shot defensemen as the third pairing." Yeah, it's true. With Rathbone not on the roster then it makes that left side a little weak behind Ekman Larson and Hughes. You can play Hunt there, but they've been playing um, Burroughs there instead. So yeah, I think the thought was get Rathbone in Abbotsford, play him more minutes, 18 to 20, as opposed to the 10 to 12 he would get up here with a big club. And I don't think they were sold on his defensive game just yet. Good question, Chris. Luke, at what point would you stop watching the Canucks? Honestly, never. Uh, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, but I've been a fan all 47 years of my life. I don't see it changing. Nothing to do with this YouTube channel. Yes, I have. As I like to say, I, I've invested a lot of time, money, and energy into this team, and I'm not complaining. I, I choose to do so. No one's forcing me to do so, but I don't think I will stop watching. I, I, I simply don't think that that's going to happen. And finally, two statements as opposed to questions. Matt says, this is my team, and I'll never quit as a fan. Keep up with the positive, timely, and trustworthy coverage as this organization recovers, Clay. I hope the Sabines will be a large part of the turnaround. Go Canucks, go. Well said, Mark. Yes, you, you memorized my, my opening of positive, timely, and trustworthy. 
And I think the Sedins will have a bigger role as we go forward. And Shua says, I can't think of any more questions. I love this team for the past 35 years, and this feels like the lowest point. Maybe it's because I was younger during past dark times, but this seriously feels the worst. So much work to do to turn this thing around. Can't disagree with anything he said there, Shua. I think it's the lowest point I can remember as a fan as well. And we, together, we have been through some really tough times. All right, Canucks fans, thank you for your questions. Some really good ones today. Great variety. I hear the frustration. I hear the pain. But there's also a twinge of optimism in there. And that's kind of how I feel right now. So it starts tonight against Boston. Again, Halak starting in the comments. Put your score prediction. Put your first Canucks goal scorer. And also let me know if you have any lingering resentment towards the Boston Bruins. Tonight, I will be on live at 10 p.m. for my normal weekly Sunday live stream. Okay, friends, shout out to my Hall of Fame members. Nux fan number 29, Justin Credible, Lucas Gates, and Andrew Chang. And to my, did I say Hall of Fame? Start again. Or maybe I said hero. I can't remember. I have short-term memory. Shout out to my hero members. Nux fan number 29, Justin Credible, Lucas Gates, and Andrew Chang. Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brewfield, Shannon Hollingworth, Carol Bovenlander, and HSM Fangirl Gaming. Thanks for your support as always. And thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, we're up to 51 member, uh, members now, which is amazing. S- simply hit the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. You can join there as well. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of this channel if you'd like to. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the day. I'll see you tonight at 10 p.m. for my live stream. God bless and go Canucks go.